I want to teach um, on the power of fasting and prayer. Now, what I'm going to teach you, like I said, is for a generation. A generation. that will step into what God has begun. And move with the propensity of the Spirit. So This all night is not really about shouting that your destiny will change. There is more to it. So I'm teaching on the power of fasting and prayer. This will change a generation. I know what I'm saying. Just increase the volume. So you can write that down, the power of fasting and prayer. Now, we need to understand this. That though we are in a new covenant, There are many wonderful things in the Old Testament canons or what we call the inspired scriptures that are still very relevant for us today. Praise God. Yes, the law of Moses has been fulfilled. The Ten Commandments and the very ordinances of the old covenant no longer hold against the believer and much more the old covenant that was made with the children of Israel was abolished by the death of Jesus Christ which is very great news but we got to understand that not every part of the spiritual literature of the scriptures was abolished very important because in Romans chapter 15 from the verse 4 the Bible tells us that these things were written for our learning in Hebrews the Bible tells us to follow the example of those who through faith and patience obtained the promise so there is an example to follow even in the Old Testament praise God in 2 Timothy chapter 3, the verse 15, the Bible says, uh, uh, from the verse 15, it says, all scripture is given by the inspiration of God. That's in 16. And it's profitable, profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction and for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be perfect, totally furnished unto all good works. So the word scripture, there is not referring to the New Testament. Anytime you see scripture in the new testament is referring to genesis to malachi so the bible is telling us that there is profit in the scriptures that tells us that not everything in the canons of the old testament books have been abolished because jesus died what was abolished was the covenant that was cut with israel called the old covenant which did not even begin in the book of genesis but began in exodus Praise God. Now, we got to understand that there are some very beautiful truths that are still relevant or which was carried over even in the New Testament and are still relevant for our spiritual edification. And one of them is um, obedience. We find obedience in the Old Testament. We find obedience in the New Testament. We are to obey the word of God just like the Old Testament folks obey the voice of God. So it's not abolished. Praise God. But what to obey is what matters. Number two, discipleship. It's something also that we see in the Old Testament and today we see in the New Testament. We saw how Moses groomed Joshua. We saw how Elijah groomed Elisha. We saw how David groomed his mighty man. So discipleship 
is relevant today. Number three, integrity and character. It's something we still find and learn from the Old Testament. Please, you've got to make some notes. This is very important. It will help you and save you from sleeping. There are characters in the Bible we can learn from and conduct our lives in accordance to it. Then, number four, humility. We see that in the Old Testament. We see that in the New Testament. In fact, the New Testament testifies that uh, God gives grace to the humble and he resists the proud. It's the same. Praise God. Number five is loyalty and dedication loyalty and dedication number six is giving very relevant today though we find it in the old testament the next is prayer prayer wasn't abolished we see how prayer sustained the fathers of the old testament how it impacted and affected their lives we saw what prayer did in those generations before we are in today we saw how god raised men through prayer we see moses we see elijah we see david we see joshua how god raised them through prayer and it's the same for us today in the New Testament. It hasn't been abolished. And we see how prayerlessness can destroy a man. We see it. There's only two times that Samson prayed. The first time he was thirsty after he fought a war. And he prayed. The second time he had messed up. He was actually tied between two pillars. And he prayed for strength to destroy. So anytime Samson was praying, he was in trouble. And I tell you, a believer who only prays when he's in trouble, he's already in trouble. Praise God. So it was what shaped the lives of the fathers. And today it's still relevant in the New Testament. You are, you, you are not beyond your prayer life. You are not beyond your prayer life. And you've got to understand that God can never use you beyond your prayer life. He can't use you beyond your prayer life. Now, we, we got to establish this. Very important. That God will use everybody. But in every usage, there is a dosage of usage. So, so don't get disappointed. God will use everybody. But in every usage, there is a dosage. There are certain dimensions in the spirit you will never, never be able to operate in except you yield to a certain level of anointing. I'm telling you this. You can quote every scripture you know doctrinally. I'm telling you, you'll face that reality. And I'm not a, a novice of, of what I'm saying. I know what I'm saying. Praise God. In fact, prayerlessness is pride. For a man not to pray or for a man not to have a prayer life is a man that is saying, I can take care of myself. I can do it all by myself. I'm in charge. So that is the scene of prayerlessness. Praise God. And finally, what we are teaching is fasting. That is the, the last one. There are many more, but I just subjected it to these ones. A lot of times, many believers think that fasting is something that has been abolished along with the old covenant. But that's a joke. Praise God. In fact, fasting is one of the most essential, yet the most ignored spiritual discipline in the body of Christ today. It's the most misunderstood spiritual discipline in the church, especially by those who have come to understand and appreciate the love and the grace of God. In fact, how many sermons today do we hear on fasting? The church does not want to fast again. The church does not want to pray. 
in fact i had somebody write the other time that thinking of god's love for you is prayer please you are joking you know people want to find some nice shortcuts you know they, they want to avoid the labor of prayer prayer is labor you can't run it's labor praise god i love this thing this will change somebody today praise god so the church has confused spiritual discipline with legalism and when it comes to the place of self-denial where a man can open his heart for god's spiritual capacity to flow through him he says no 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 it's it's legalism when we try to fast and pray for long hours it's a type of works and we miss this whole thing listen there is rest in salvation but there's no rest on the mission field so people have confused themselves with the the term rest means that rest every 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 you wake up in the morning you find some watcher for yourself and you shout them the righteousness of god you are just joking you are joking in the body you find believers who never go for evangelism and they say we are resting in the finished work of christ there is no rest on the mission field souls are dying there is no rest in the hospital patients are dying and God is looking for a man who will yield himself to pay the price and today I heard someone says there is no price to pay Christ has already paid the price listen I've said that before several times that there is no price to pay Christ paid every price therefore we are only to relax in what he has done I'm telling you, if grace is not well taught in a balanced way, it will raise a lot of lazy believers. I'm telling you, it will raise lazy believers who will not be able to fulfill God's assignment for their lives. Because the last time I checked, Apostle Paul said, I thank God that I labored more than all the apostles, yet not I by the grace of God. That means grace enables a man to labor. So if you found grace and makes you lazy, be careful because you're on the wrong path. The man called um, Zacchaeus. This man was a thief. He stole from people. When he encountered Jesus, who is grace, he gave four times back what he stole from them. In other words, when a man has truly encountered grace, his life will be four times what it was before when he had not found grace. In other words, if you are praying for two hours where you find grace and understand true grace, you pray for ten hours. I told myself that no law preacher will pray more than me. No law preacher will fast more than me. Uh-uh. It ain't gonna happen. Because I found something. A new motivation that makes me do. Yet the doing is from his doing. I found it. Now I can labor in prayer. Because I've understood what it means to find grace. What it means to find grace. I love him. Praise God. So, in salvation there is rest. In prayer and fasting is a wrestle. <laughs> it's a wrestle, brother. It's a wrestle. You got to understand that the church has forgotten that though Christ died for our salvation you got to listen to this the church has forgotten that though christ died for our salvation there is still a place to grow spiritually and christ will not grow for you he won't study the bible for you he won't pray for you he won't win souls for you so though christ has finished the work in salvation there is still a place for spiritual growth. Number two, though Christ died for our salvation, number two, you got to write this down, there is an ongoing spiritual warfare. You can edit it from the Bible. There is an ongoing spiritual warfare between the kingdom of darkness and light. Bible says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, spiritual wickedness in heavenly places and darkness 
there are there are demonic forces around though we are saved in christ they are they are around there is a spiritual ongoing warfare whether you acknowledge it or not that is not the case it is there praise god number three there is an unrenewed soul that is dominated by the flesh when you got born again it was not your soul that got born again it wasn't your body that got born again it was your spirit so though your spirit was made a new creation your soul became unrenewed your flesh is too present now this is how i explain this now the flesh means two things you got to understand this the flesh means two things number one it means the old man number two it means self so we got to understand that in the death of jesus what happened to us is that our old man which is our adamic nature which is the old man of sin was crucified together with christ and that body of sin was destroyed and terminated by the cross but there's a problem remember i said the flesh means two things number one the old man number two flesh means self though the old man is crucified self is still present and guess what paul says i know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing so though jesus paid the price for your sins and you are saved there is an unrenewed soul that is dominated by the flesh and if you're a believer who is unconcerned about your spiritual life i'm sorry you're going to have a good time with the flesh the flesh is the part of you that does not want to serve god the flesh is the part of you that enjoys luxury and pleasure at the verge of your spiritual growth the flesh is the part of you that resists the the, the plans and the purposes of god for your life the flesh is the part of you that wants to sleep when it's time to pray no wonder the bible says the spirit is willing but the flesh is weak that flesh is still present here and the and, and the bad news is that you cannot kill the flesh you can only dominate the flesh and you cannot dominate the flesh by eating three times a day for a whole year it's not possible i'm helping someone today yes, number number four there is an evil world system designed to take your heart away from the lord so though you are saved in christ though you are born again though you're a new creation you are still living in a in an evil present world that has a system dominating the hearts of men and robbing their hearts from god and if a believer does not understand this you might be saved but your heart would never be for the lord it will never be for the lord your heart can fall into idolatry where you magnify other things in your heart above jesus i'm telling you your phone can be that idol and you are born again yet your phone dominates you gone are those days when people went to the shrine to bow down to god and spill blood today your phone can become an idol based on how you value it in your heart if your phone becomes the reason why you don't do your morning devotion man you're gonna got a, a hard time being a christian if friends take your time and your heart from the lord you are going to have a hard time being a christian and number five there is an adversary called the devil who works 24 7 to destroy god's plans in the lives of humanity so jesus died we are saved yet there is a devil somewhere who is working 24 7 in fact when he came to the temptation of jesus and jesus overcame the temptation the bible says he went for a season a season unfortunately we are living in a body that is subjected to time circumstances decay and stress but this devil is not living in time so he does not retire he has patience for you praise god so considering these five things i just mentioned you cannot joke with your christian life there are three enemies a christian is going to fight before jesus comes they're going to keep fighting these three enemies number one is the flesh number two is the world number three is the devil there are three enemies when it came to the flesh you know what john said in galatians chapter 5 the verse 16 
he says the spirit lasted against the flesh and the flesh against the spirit both are contrary to to each other that you may not be able to do the things that you would you may want to pray but there is something called the flesh you may want to serve God faithfully but there is something called the flesh you may want to stop uh, masturbating but there is something called the flesh and listen if Christians are not taught to understand it this way they are in trouble these are three enemies we don't negotiate with the flesh we deal with the flesh by dominating it we don't entertain the flesh no it's an enemy the Bible says, for to be carnally minded is death. For the carnal mind is enmity against God. Romans chapter um, 8, from the, from the verse 6 to 9. To be carnally minded is enmity against God. Paul says, for I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. See, there is nothing good in your flesh. That is why the Bible says, for by strength shall no man prevail. Nothing good. The flesh is not only the part of you that wants to do bad things. No. The flesh is the part of you that wants to please God from human strength. You see? And number three, the devil. The Bible says your, your enemy, your adversary, which is the devil. So you have three enemies. By knowing these things I'm sharing with you, you cannot but to fast and pray. And I'm going to tell you why soon. I'm going to tell you why soon. Because there are some of you uh, sitting here, especially you the ladies, uh, that say that fasting is for pastors. We, we are getting there now. It's for those who want to enter into ministry. We are coming there. Fasting is an exercise if one wants to be spiritually fit. Let me repeat that again. Fasting is a spiritual exercise if one wants to be spiritually fit. Fasting is a weapon if one wants to conquer. Fasting is a requirement if one wants to become an effective disciple of Jesus. And all these things, you're going to see them in explanation. And you got to know this. Fasting is not a gift. It is a sacrifice. Am I helping somebody? You got to understand that anybody that made an undeniable impact right from the Bible till today was a man of fasting and prayer. I'm telling you. Anybody in history, in time, throughout the Bible till today who made maximum impact was a man of fasting and prayer. Show me anything other than this and I know it's proceeding from the flesh. I'm telling you. I started my Christian life with hardened fasting. I'm going to be sharing with you soon. And I came to understand the full concept of grace. And I said, oh, then fasting is not For two years, I stopped fasting. And I'll tell you what happened to me. No man in history throughout the Bible who was ever used by God to do anything amazing was without fasting and prayer. Praise God. Every relevant saint from the Old Testament was a man of fasting and prayer. So in the Old Testament, number one, we see the man Moses. He was a man of fasting and prayer. Look what God used him for. Number two, Elijah, man of fasting and prayer. Three, David, man of fasting and prayer. And I read Psalm 109 verse 24. I, I, I was shocked what I saw. He said, my knees are weak through fasting and my flesh fell out of fatness. It has been proven that your knees can only be weak in fasting when you cross 30 days. 
without food or water. That's when your knees become weak. And look what David said. Look at this man called David. Look at his life. Look at the Psalms he wrote. Number four, Esther. I'm calling out a generation. I'm calling out a generation. They will hear it. They will hear it. Five, Nehemiah. Six, Ezra. We see Isaiah. In fact, Isaiah wrote a whole chapter on fasting. Joel. Daniel, my good friend. In Daniel chapter 9, the verse 3. I love what I was reading. He says, and I set my face unto the Lord to seek by prayer and supplication with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. I'm going to turn Israel as a nation. Israel as a nation. 11 Jeremiah. And many more. Please take this thing serious. And so in the New Testament. And that is what I love. Love. Number one is Jesus. I told someone, if Jesus fasted, I'll fast. Please. Any revelation beyond this, you are treading on the nose path, I'm telling you. Jesus, when he found himself as a man, listen, for your information, maybe you just forgot. Let me remind you, and the word was made flesh. Now, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. But when the word found himself as a man, he fasted. And guess what? He fasted after he had received the Holy Ghost. That means immediately the believer receives the Holy Ghost. He must end time to fasting. I'm telling you, he must make fasting his life. Jesus did not only practice fasting. Oh. He did not only practice. He taught fasting and prophesied about fasting. I'll shock you today. In Matthew chapter 6, the verse 1, Jesus spoke about three spiritual important realities about a man. And you got to leave this place with this understanding. Number one, Jesus spoke in chapter 6, the verse 1, he spoke about giving. Then he started by saying, take heed that ye do not do your arms before men to be seen of them. Otherwise, ye have no reward of your heavenly father which is in heaven. You can read the verse when you go home. Now, if you read the verse 5, so he just spoke about giving. Now he says, when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites, for they love to pray. Standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men, verily I say unto you, they have their reward. So he spoke first about what? Given. Number two, he spoke about? Prayer. Guess the third point. In the verse 16. This is good though. He says, moreover, when ye fast. He did not say, if you fast. When? That means he knows you will fast. And he expects you to fast. So he's telling you what to do when you are fast. So he says, when you fast. <laughs> so Jesus already knows you will fast. So he says, when ye fast, be not as the hypocrites. And today I'll tell you why your fasting is not working. I'll tell you. Of a sound countenance. Mm. For they disfigure their faces that they may appear unto men to fast. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. Your reward is that funds you received. That you are a general of fasting. That's the reward you just received. Fasting machine. Chale, you fast. Chale, you know, be me or be God. Hey, 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 hey. You have your reward. <laughs> <laughs> that reward is the fans. <laughs> Hallelujah. So Jesus spoke about three realities. What's number one? Given. Number two? Pre number three? They all moved in the same frequency. Do you believe in giving? Yes, sir. Are you always led to give or you know you must give? 
You know you must give. You are not. You are only led once in a while. Number two, are you led to pray or you know you must pray? So that means you are led once in a while to pray, right? Third question. Are you led to fast or you know you must fast? See, you cannot choose prayer and giving and take fasting out because Jesus spoke about them in the same frequency. All the three of them, he says, don't let it appear to men that you are doing it. You have your reward. So he's telling you that there are three spiritual forces. Giving, prayer, fasting. Giving, prayer, fasting. I'll tell you one of the reasons why your fasting is not working. Because you are not giving. Number two, because you are not praying. You are starving yourself waiting for 12 p.m. or 2 p.m. So you cannot do fasting without and I'm helping you here. I'm helping you. And Jesus prophesied in Matthew chapter 9, the verse. Look at the verse um, 14. It's very funny, but it's, it's serious. Jesus prophesied about fasting, that the church will fast. Look. He says, then came to him the disciples of John saying, why do we the Pharisees fast often? But your disciples, their mouth and their cheeks are looking so from from. They came to ask Jesus that question. Look at Jesus' reply. He gave a prophecy in the reply. He said, and Jesus said unto them, Can the children of the bride chamber mourn? So he calls fasting morning. So if you are feeling hungry, it is part of the morning process. Are you seeing that? Someone says, Man of God, I've been fasting. I'm getting hungry. What are you expecting? You, you expect to feel fine? <laughs> Look, he says, as long as the bridegroom is with them, then he says, but the days will come. He's prophesying now. When the bridegroom shall be taken from them, and then they fast. Wow. Wow. Who is the bridegroom? Jesus. Who is the bride? The church. Where is the bride? Taking into heaven. What is the groom doing? Oh, no, where is the bridegroom gone? He's taken to heaven. What is the, what is the bride supposed to do? So when a man fasts, he's actually saying that he's anticipating the coming of Jesus. His groom. He's expecting his groom. He says the time will come when Jesus said this he was alive. What was the time? When he's taken into heaven. And guess what? You can check the book of Acts. The moment Jesus was taken, they began fasting. <laughs> look at Acts chapter 13. You will see there. The verse 2. Look, look at the verse 2. He says, and they ministered to the Lord and fasted. The Holy Ghost said, separate me Barnabas. See, the Holy Ghost spoke when they fasted. Can the Holy Ghost speak when you are eating? Yes, it's possible. But there are some things he can never tell you when you are eating. In case you are confused, I'm coming, okay? You'll be fine. All right. So Jesus had the Holy Ghost. And when he found himself as a man, Jesus fasted. And of course, the Bible says he hungered. But the Bible didn't say he tested. You can go and check Matthew chapter 4. That means that, true. I mean, if you want to do good fasting to have enough capacity, you can avoid food, but never avoid water. The reason why some of you, you start getting dizzy when you are fasting is because you don't take water. The Bible never said Jesus tested. The Bible says he hungered. That means there is a possibility he drank water. In fact, I'm going to get there when I come to guidelines of safe fasting. You must drink at least eight glasses of water a day when you are fasting. Don't see yourself as Schwarzenegger. You want to do dry, dry, dry fasting. When everybody sees that, Elebeya, Elebeya, Eporo, Eporo. Then it's like you are dry. Everybody sees that, yeah. boy. Hey, hey. You die before your time. <laughs> you die before your time. In the name of fasting, don't kill your body. 
Tell somebody, drink more water. Drink more water. If somebody is sleeping, hold the person and say, hey, we are speaking to a generation you are sleeping. <laughs> Look at Luke chapter 4, the verse 14. After Jesus fasted for the 40 days and he was done with the temptation. Look what the Bible said. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit. Hey, listen. Jesus received the Holy Ghost in chapter 3. He went into first chapter 4. In the verse 14, remember he was filled with the Holy Ghost, but the Bible never said he went in the power of the Spirit. When he was filled with the Holy Ghost, he was driven in the wilderness to be tempted. When he was done with the fast, the Bible says he returned in the power of the Spirit. So it's one thing to be filled with the Spirit and another thing to go in the power of the Spirit. It happened in fasting. It happened in fasting. It happened in fasting. Hmm. Number two, Apostle Paul. Apostle Paul. Apostle Paul. The apostle of grace. The one who was the architect of the New Testament. He constructed the New Testament. He says, therefore, as a wise master builder, builder, I have laid the foundation. The word wise master builder is one Greek word called architecton. From which we have the word architect. So, Paul is saying, I am the architect of the New Testament. God gave me the plan. A drum. So, everything you seriously want to know about church doctrine, it was founded on Paul. In fact, he was bold enough to call it my gospel. Just like the Bible calls the uh, law, the law of Moses. He called it my gospel. <laughs> That's how bold this man was. And guess what this man did? In fact, when he converted, he started with three days fasting. <laughs> you can go and check it. <laughs> You can go and check it. In Acts chapter 9, the moment he, he converted, the Bible says he ate nothing and drank nothing for three days. He was blind. He was after three, three days fasting. God sent Ananias to come and open his eyes. That's how the tear robber, <laughs> that's how he started the journey. Praise God. Huh. In Acts chapter 27, the verse 33, there was a shipwreck. And guess what they, 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 they did? He says, and while the day was coming, Paul besought them all to take meat, saying, this day is the 14th day that he have tarried and continued what? Fasting, having taken nothing. So Paul fasted 14 days also. In Acts chapter 13, you're going to see something there. The verse 1. Look. He says, now there were in the church that was in Antioch certain prophets. These are, these are all ministers. Song ministers, usher, everybody is part of this thing. You know, some of you think that your ministry has ended when you close church. You are joking. So if I'm an usher, my ushering work has ended when we finish. Baba yo, you be here next Sunday. You have missed this whole thing. By the time we are through, eh? Hmm. So he says, certain prophets and teachers. So see, some people say it's only prophet that fast. They were teachers fasting. Look, he says, and Barnabas and Simon, that was called Niger, and Lucius of Cyrene, and Manian, which had brought up with Herod the Tetrarch, and who? Saul, who was Paul. Next verse. Look, he says, they ministered to the Lord and fasted. So Paul was included in the fasting of the ministers. I don't think any of us was anointed more than these early church ministers. No, if you are more anointed, lift up your hands and let's give you, let's hail you this uh, morning. They fasted. You know, we see Stephen full of the Holy Ghost. We say, wow. They fasted. Philip, transported by the Holy Ghost. Try, try, see if you can transport. Try. Try, try transporting. Transporter. Transport. <laughs> you are believing God for transporting and anointing. With, with pizza in your mouth every morning. No, this is a serious matter. I remember I saw uh, when I heard of John Knox who said, give me England, uh, give me Scotland. Oh? 
or I die. You know, I got into a place of fasting and prayer and I, I was feeling the Holy Ghost and I also said, Lord, give me souls or I die. And the Holy Ghost said, die. <laughs> oh, it's not a joke, oh, it's serious. The Holy Ghost said, die. I said, oh, Holy Ghost, I ain't talk He said, die. Die. And I said, oh, why? You know how many years he prayed? He prayed 20 years. 20 years. You can go and do that research. 20 years praying that prayer. And I did three months. I said, give me souls. He said, die. Son, die. <laughs> it's not a joke, man. There was another group of people. They fasted for revival for 13 years. 13 years. Give me souls so I die. The Holy Ghost was not nice to me. Look. Look at the next verse. And when they, they separated Paul and, Ban, uh, Paul and Barnabas, look what happened. When they had fasted, so they fasted for the calling. After the calling, they fasted before they departed. <laughs> <laughs> so it says when they had fasted and prayed and laid hands on them they sent them away see this thing you guys must take this in serious so. they laid hands on who Paul and Barnabas the one who constructed the new testament was under authority he went and brought report the one who wrote two thirds of the new testament they laid hands on him and sent him they sent him. Paul, go. No, you didn't get what I'm saying. You didn't get it. He was under the council of Jerusalem, the authority of the council. Apostle Paul, the one God used more than any, any apostle I ever saw. Hmm. Look at Acts chapter 14, the verse 23. I'm giving you all these scriptures so that you can't, you don't say uh, in the New Testament there is no fasting. Someone said, someone was arguing that fasting, you know what he said? He said, fasting is carnal. I said, okay, continue. And somebody argued and gave him all the scriptures. He said, in, in the original Greek, it's not there. Who the original? Sir? Now I say, oh, life. Look. And when they had ordained them elders in every church and had prayed with, prayed with, they commended them to the Lord on whom they believed. And look at the killer bomb. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, the verse 27. In weariness and painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger and thirst, in Fastings, what? Often. Apostle Paul, the apostle of grace said in fastings, what? Often. So, Paul, the apostle, was an often faster. Now, bring your argument. The apostle of grace was an often faster. He fasted often. You want God to use you. You want God to use you. You don't know. The, see, the price is heavy. I'm telling you, I won't sugarcoat it. The price is heavy. It's a dear price. It will cost you everything. It will cost you your money. It will cost you your life. It will cost you your friends. It will cost you the things you hold dear to yourself. It will cost you. I'm telling you. It will cost you. I know what I'm saying. It will cost you big time. It will cost you tears. It will cost you. You will lose friends when you begin to pay the price. All your money will be yielded to the Holy Ghost. Now you have your own money. You can't use it the way you want. The Holy Ghost instructs you what to do with it. It will cost you. It's expensive. We see the prophetess Anna in Luke chapter 2, the verse 36. This is a woman, so I'm encouraging the women in the, the, the women in the house. 
Look, there was one Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of Phanuel, tribe of Asa. She was of great age and had lived with her husband seven years from her virginity. Next verse. He says, and she was a widow. That means when she got married, seven years later, the husband died. Okay? He says, and when she, uh, and she was a widow of about four score and twenty years, which departed not from the temple, but served God with, with fastings. No fasting. No. So, she used every different kind of fasting to serve God. And prayers night and day. The word four score and, and four years is 84 years. So, let's assume she got married, let's say, around 24. So, from that time to 84, it's over 50 years. Fasting God will pray and fasting every day. And guess what? She was the one that brought baby Jesus to be dedicated. She was prepared now. You think God will bring his son to anybody to dedicate? There were priests around. They didn't take them there because they had pot bellies. Now, if you have pot belly, don't be, don't be worried because I also have one too. I'm not saying if you have pot belly, you can't be spiritual. Praise God. But in the dedication of Jesus, they brought Jesus to Anna, the woman who fasted and prayed. They, they didn't bring the son of God to anybody. She dedicated Jesus. <laughs> See, there are some great purposes you can never be able to accomplish without fasting and prayer. I'm telling you. I'm surprised they didn't bring Jesus to any of the priests. They brought him to Anna. Whose only duty was to serve God with prayer and fasting. Peter, Barnabas, and all the ministers of the early church were men of fasting. You can write that down. And now also, the early church of the first century, second century, third century, fourth century, down to the ages, they all fasted. All the people that made impact, they all fasted. Polycarp, you can go and read about him. Man of fasting. Tertullian. See, those days, eh, when a man was called a theologian, it's not the theologians we have today. A.W. Toza was a theologian prophet. And if you read the life of A.W. Toza, you will you'll be shocked. A man in tune with the spirit. Every environment he goes, he will pray. Man of the spirit. One time he, he had a ministration somewhere. He, he prayed and over prayed. And his time to minister was up. And they put another minister in his place. And later he came and said, I'm sorry. There were other appointments that took my time. I was reading it. I, I, I bowed down in shame. Because when we are praying, we are watching time. And after 10 minutes, you say, you are tired. Lord, use me like that. Martin Luther. How many have heard Martin Luther? The man God used to unfold. Oh, Pastor Moses, God bless you. I'm just seeing you. The man God used to unfold the revelation that went into the dark ages. Justification by faith. It, it came out by Martin Luther. You thought he was just reading, eh? You have no idea. The man was a faster and a prayer warrior. He, he was sold out to fasting and prayer. Huh. John Calvin. How many have heard his name before? Calvinism. That man was a faster. Man of fasting and prayer. John Knox. Praying hide. There was one guy, he's called praying hide. The man prayed until prayer became his nickname. He was called praying hide. <laughs> Charles Finney. You can go and check about this man. That man was a dangerous man. Before he entered the town, he would fast dry without food and water for three days. When he enters the town, kilometers away before he gets to the town, people will be slain by the spirit. 
and some will be convicted of sin and they'll be crying in brokenness, weeping and begging God for salvation. He has not got into the town. Mouse! You ta- this one is not tapable. It's not tapable. You, are, you beg. <laughs> it's not tapable. <laughs> hey, it's like tap. This one is not tapable. It's workable, not tapable. Mouse! When you go to the town, people will be slain by the spirit. So, when people see people slain by the spirit, they know. Charles finish around. <laughs> and you, you come. You come to a place. Nothing is happening. Aren't, are, are you not ashamed? <laughs> are, are you feeling fine? That you even come, nobody looks at you. <laughs> nobody looks at you. You are okay. No, you, you, you must cry. Charles Finney. He entered into a town. In the town where he entered, all the schools in that town, whilst the teachers were teaching, the children started weeping. and said, I want Jesus. I want Jesus. I want to repent for my sins. I want Jesus. So the teacher was like, what is happening to the children? They, he was going to report to another teacher. The teacher also was coming out with the same report. And they were going to look for the other teachers. The other teachers came with the same report. All the children were weeping. And the children had assembly. Charles Finney came and led them all to Christ. He went to a, a warehouse full of 3,000 workers. And when he got there, he stood there. When he stood there, a woman looked at him and insulted him. He didn't insult the woman. He looked at the woman's face and he began weeping. <laughs> when he began weeping, all of a sudden, the spirit of conviction fell on the woman. The woman started apologizing, begging that she wants to receive salvation. Before he realized, the thing has spread in the whole community. 3,000 people were begging God to receive salvation. And, and guess what? The one in charge of that company, eh? the man in charge of the company, he said they should all gather for salvation. They all got saved, and the man inclusive also got saved. I'm like, hey. 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 Some of these things, it's sad though. You finish reading them and you're sad. You see, you are, your, your, your greatest dream is to have iPhone 11. Look at your face. Your greatest dream is to go to Dubai. 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 Your greatest dream is to, is to go to Dubai. It's not that you are going to Dubai to go and save souls. You want to go and walk at the desert. And see buildings that men built. No, I think this church, the church is joking. I'm telling you. We have lost our fire. We have lost our hunger for God. Everybody is comfortable and relaxed. We are, we are okay not praying for two weeks. One month, three months. A Christian has not prayed. He's comfortable. There is no conviction. Nothing bothers you. Nothing makes you weep. You, oh, my goodness. Jonathan Edwards, John Wesley. John Wesley fasted every Wednesday and Friday. In fact, in fact, if you wanted to be a pastor in his church, you must fast as a, as, as a necessity for being a pastor. Every Wednesday and Friday, you break at 4 p.m. That is your first criteria to become a pastor. If you want to be his pastor, you will fast every week twice. Till 4 p.m. And Billy Graham, after his Bible school in or Roberts University, they decided to go for an excursion in John Wesley's house. It is still a, a monument right now. People go there and go and have a look. And when they went, they saw his bed. His bed is still there. And on the carpet, when they looked at the carpet, there were two holes in the carpet. And they said that it was his knees that drilled the hole. It was that was his prayer closet. He was kneeling continuously onto the carpet bore holes. When they went back from the sketching and they sat in the car, they were checking the lock to see whether everybody is there. And they realized that there was one person who was missed. So the one who was on board, who was in charge, decided to go back inside to go and check. When he went there, he saw Billy Graham's legs inside the two holes. And his prayer, he was crying, sobbing, weeping, and said, God, do it again. Do it again. Do it again. 
That is how come we see Billy Graham. That's how come we see Billy Graham. Knelt inside and said, God, do it again. Can you say the same thing? In fact, some of you are in a hurry for us to close, for you to go home and go and sleep. That's the problem of the church. We love to sleep. We love to eat. In fact, we'll be eating breakfast and in our minds, whilst we are chewing, we are thinking of lunch. I'm telling you, it happens to every Christian here. And whilst you are eating lunch, you are thinking of what you're going to eat at, at, at dinner. That's how far the enemy has brought us. Food. We love food. John G. Lake, go and do a research on him. He was a man of fasting. Oh, don't tell me I'm an ordinary worker. I'm using all these people so that you realize that the, you, when you get to a place where your business is not working, it is on fasting. It's not marketing strategy. It's on fasting because if these people were able to accomplish this in ministry, you can accomplish the same in business. And then you are calling people. I don't know. People are not buying again. Go on your knees in fasting. Give yourself 14 days fast and let's see what happens. My sister called me from the UK. She was in serious trouble. Very serious trouble. Very serious trouble. Which was not her fault. She was falsely accused for something she didn't do. And she called me. She said, you know something? I'm going to give you a three days fast. I'm going to pray together with you. Three days fast. And I gave her some guidelines on it. Guess what? She texted me today. In two days, she's not on three days. In two days, the problem was solved. In two days. If I tell you the seriousness of the matter, you, you, you will be amazed. On the second day, there was a turnaround. She texted me today. She's so happy, smiling, sending me voice notes. I was like, if the church understood this power, the moment the church is not fasting, members can, should come and beg pastor, pastor, when are we fasting? When are we fasting? I'm telling you. Many of you should go and check out for a man called A.A. A. Allen. Reverend A.A. A. Allen. He, start, he was the, one of the people who started 10 church healing crusades. See, that man won't pray for more than one minute. It doesn't matter the sickness. It doesn't matter the sickness. You get up. A.A. Allen. Go and check it out. Ah, you can see his videos there. Old, old videos. Go to YouTube and go and check it out. How can God use a man like this? The cancer we are struggling to pray about. The man will lay hands on you. In one minute, you get up. Reverend A.A. Allen. It was recorded that there was a person that had a problem. His problem was that his skin was like a reptile. And they brought him to him. He hugged him and prayed for him. By the time he removed his hands, he had a new skin. Now, these people are not normal. There was a baby that had 26 diseases. 26 diseases at the go when he was born. In fact, his tongue was even out. The tongue was out like a Jimmy Jimmy. His legs was crossed inside. And his legs was now his knee. So he wore his shoes in his knee. That was the condition of the baby. And they, he, he actually saw uh, through a word of knowledge and uh, gift of discernment. They brought the baby out. He put the baby in his arms. Before he prayed, he had... God was molding the baby. The tank entered back into the tank. The baby was made whole. And the baby saw the mother and cried, Mama, for the first time. The baby started talking. Mama. A. A. Ale. I watched one of his videos when he was praying for a man who, was, who, was, uh, who had a very severe pneumonia. And his, about six of his ribs were removed because of this condition. He prayed for the man. Instantly, all the ribs filled again. So I was rejoicing until I heard R.W. Shambach tell us about who this man is. In fact, Dr. Masbron was the one who said, A.A. Allen fasted 40 days, five times a year. <laughs> now, see, I'm not saying this for you to go and start 40 days fasting. You die before your time. I'm just sharing with you so that we see. See, it starts from somewhere. You start from somewhere. You start from somewhere. He fasted 40 days, five times in a year. R.W. Shambach, who was a protege of A. Allen, he ate four times in a month. Do 
Before he died, he met Dr. Miles Marone. They went for lunch. When he came out from the room, he said, Miles, 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 you know, food is a distraction. I regret eating. He was an old man. Old man. It was recorded that Aaron W. Shamak would get to the meeting and demons will start screaming. They will start screaming when he entered the place. He has not prayed. The demons will start screaming. When he has not prayed. I was watching one, one video when he was sharing some of the testimonies. He prayed for the, a woman whose fingers were all cut through an accident. He put his hands on it and laid hands on it and prayed. The next morning, the fingers grew. He prayed for a, a man that was born without a hand. And he pulled the hand. After prayer, the hand came out. The next morning, the, the, the fingers also had appeared. Out of Bishambak. One day after teaching, he decided to do an experiment. He called one of his sons and then anointed him. He says, go and heal anybody. And the guy also didn't understand any protocol. He entered into a hospital where they, he didn't follow the rules. He just entered into, he sneaked there. He, too, he was so ignorant. He held the oil, anointing on the patient. The first floor. When he was done, when he anoints you, he says you are discharged. So they thought he was a doctor. So, when they heard that, in faith, then they all got up. They were all healed. And the top floor, they were all discharged. He came to the down floor. A woman was declared dead. He went to hide under a wallpaper, looking at them. When the doctors left and covered him, he went and anointed the dead body. He said, I command your spirit, come back to life now, in the name of Jesus. Then the woman sneezed seven times. And the woman came up. No knowing an old man whose leg was hanging there was watching him. He said, young man, come. <laughs> he said, bring me that oil. <laughs> and guess what? He started praying for all the people. They were all healed. And he was arrested. When he realized it, they put him in jail. And they told Arab Nabi Shambak, he was going to bail him. And the Holy Ghost said, no. Leave him there. And the guy, after five days in prison, came out rejoicing. Why? Because a magistrate called him in court. And the magistrate said, what is your case? He said, oh, it was, pre so it was not a serious offense. So the magistrate was angry hmm, that he was arrested and put in prison. Then he was saying, no, no, don't worry, it's fine. Uh, as it stands now, the one who arrested me is even born again now. <laughs> you know why? The five days in prison, he anointed the, the one who jailed him anointed all the prisoners. They all got healed and they all got born again. The moment they all got born again, he was released. So he said, it was Jesus that arrested me. <laughs> hey. Oh my goodness. Oh. Time won't permit me to talk about Catherine Coleman. Hey. Dr. Mas Marone said about Catherine Coleman that he spent his last days, her last days with him. And the woman says, the, the woman says, Miles, 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 it's all fasting and prayer. If you see Catherine Cohen, she's so slim. She sacrificed her fatness for the work of ministry. And it was said of Catherine Cohen, those days, the auditorium, she does a service, there was a restaurant downstairs, so there were chefs that cook. She has to use the room where the chefs cook to enter into the auditorium. When she enters into the room, everybody will slain by the spirit. Those who are cooking. Before she enters the auditorium, she does not pray for the sick. While she's preaching, people are rising up from gorgeous. Cancers are dying. Just like that. Miracles just taking place. In fact, one day she was teaching and she was full of the Holy Ghost. She was walking, not knowing she was hanging in the air. She had walked past the pulpit, the stage, and she didn't know, and she was teaching. So as I was saying, she was hanging. And I said, you are hanging. Then she said, oh, sorry. Then she came back. <laughs> if nothing is happening to you, leave this auditorium now. Because I don't think you are serious. There was a dangerous man. You know, I'm talking about Americans. I'm talking about Nigeria now. 
His name is called Apostle Joseph Babalola. Please go and check. Apostle Joseph Babalola. That man fasted 40 days and 40 nights, three times a year. Per year. You, you can't imagine what God did. See, I'm saying this so that you, you come to appreciate that for you to flow in the anointing, there is a price. There's a price. This man will fast and pray. See, you might be thinking, that, oh Lord, my work is a distraction. No, it's not, it's not a distraction. You can still pray in the office. When you come back home, that three hours you used to watch TV, you can sacrifice that for prayer. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. This man was highly used of God. It's too enviable. One day he went to the bush to go and pray, kneeling down, and he felt some animal walking close around him. So he opened his eyes. It was a very big python. And he was alarmed. And the Holy Ghost says, continue what you are doing. The animal was on him. And he continued praying. By the time he finished praying, opened his eyes, the snake had dried up. The snake dried on his skin. One time after prayer, he was thirsty and held a rock and commanded water to come. And water came out of the rock. It is still there today. You can go and check it. He did what Moses did. He's the only human being so far apart from Moses. Commanded water out of a rock. See, there's a realm fasting a prayer can bring you to it. When you say yes, God can't say no. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I'm saying this to music ministers. I'm saying this to ushers. I'm saying this to bankers. I'm saying this to people who have started their business fresh. That listen to me. There is a price to bring you into a certain pedestrian in the spirit. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. This man was in prayer and Jesus appeared to him. And Jesus gave him a tube of yam. Broke half and gave half to him. Half to him. He finished eating. He asked Jesus for the other half. He says, no, the rest of the half is for the whole world. One man ate half. <laughs> that was how close he was to Jesus. He was a man of praises. Praise and worship. It was recorded that doing praise and worship. He will be worshiping and praising. You know, some of you, when we say lift up your hands, your hands are down. We say clap. You are not clapping. Oh, we, we, are, we want God to use you. You, you are just joking. <laughs> this, this man was a man of praises. When he, uh, doing fasting and prayer, he would be praising God. Doing praises. The man was levitating in the spirit as if he's going to heaven. And then the members would pull him back down. Every praise. They are scared if this man goes. There was a time, see, he prayed and healed so many sick people that he was tired and the sick people were still more. He went and laid hands on a river and blessed the river. Anybody that drank for the river, bathed with the river, everybody was healed. In fact, in less than three months, the river dried. <laughs> the river dried. What a man. They were going for a program one day and the car broke down. Whilst the man was repairing, he said, I'll see you. Bah! Transported by the Holy Ghost. <laughs> by the time the driver repaired the car and came, he has finished the service. He had finished the service. It did not come by eating and sleeping. It did not come by watching Jennifer's diary. It did not come by watching uh, Black Panther. It did not come by watching UEFA Champions League. Every match fixture, you know, including the players on loan, you know them. <laughs> Substitutes, you know their full names. <laughs> oh, I ran over um, um, Archbishop Benz in Ahosa. I, for him, you know much about it, so it's okay. There was something amazing I read. He, said, he was a, a dangerous man of fasting. I'm telling you, dangerous man of fasting. Dangerous man of fasting. One time he went to a place, somebody had fallen from a seven-story building. The person landed, his head cracked open into two. They took him to the mortuary, and he got there. He said, cover him with a cloth, and lay hands on the head, and put the head together. 
when he was done praying, the head that was scattered came back and the guy was alive. Hey, armed robbers came to his house to come and attack him because there were missionaries that came from outside the country. And when he came and saw them, he said, wait, I'm coming. I'm going for my weapon because they were having guns. His weapon was the Bible. He took the Bible and said, now in the earth, they all vanished. <laughs> See, do you know what fasting does to you? Fasting gives you boldness. That's like, anytime you are fasting, I'm talking about those who are sensitive. Anytime you are fasting, you feel you can do anything. You feel you can pray for the sick. It's like you are in a certain, you, you have some boldness. When you keep doing it with time, you'll be able to face certain challenges that people look at and say, it is too difficult. You just do it with ease. There was a man that came for one of his meetings. The man's face was bent by fire. And when he came to him, he held the man's head and turned it for him to look into heaven. He said, God, this man is created in your image. If this is how your image looks like, leave him like that. When he brought his head down, his face was like a, a, a brand new baby. Hey! Hey! I don't know about you. I'm hungry. I'm not okay. I'm not fine anymore. I'm not fine. I'm not fine. Many of you see Dr. Yongicho today and you think, oh, this man is a great man. You have no idea. He was 17 years old when he went to the Bible school and he met a woman called Sister Che. Sister Che realized he was a handsome young man He decided to give him to the daughter. And for many of you don't know this, I heard this from a woman called Ruth Heffling. She was very close to them. Sister Che was the backbone of Dr. Yongicho. He trained Dr. Yongicho. This woman began, first of all, by just eating only once a day. So she was fasting the whole day. She only eats once. She thought she was going to do it for a week before he realized the Holy Ghost is add the next week. Add the next week. Add the next week. Guess what? By the time she realized she has done eight years. Sister Che became a fasting and prayer machine. She prayed all night. Every night was an all night for her for continuously 10 years. That was when Dr. Angicho started the church. The church was only five members. In 10 years, they were over 100,000. Now they are over 1 million. Sister Che was the backbone of that growth. It was not Dr. Angicho. That woman was so sensitive to fasting that anything that happens, she will give you a fast. A baby was sick, diagnosed of a sickness that she would die. How can this woman be so wicked? He said, put the woman on a 24-hour fast. Put the baby on a 24-hour fast. So the baby fasted for 24 hours. The next morning, the baby was healed. A farmer came to her and said, all my, my poultry, all my animals are dying. She came and said, give the animals three days fast. <laughs> After three days, all the animals were healed. So if animals were healed on a serious three days water or dry fast. How much more a human being who God loves? See, can this challenge somebody? Those days, you know her prophetic word, when she's doing prophetics, her prophetic is giving you fasting by the spirit. You look at your face, you, 12. <laughs> you, 7 days. You, 14. You, 40. You, 15. That, that was a prophetic word. Now, this is strange. Have you heard that before? That was a prophetic word. And everybody who obeyed, they received tremendous miracles. May God raise people like this. In the name of Jesus. Dr. Yongicho fasted continuously every day for one year. She collapsed, he collapsed three times whilst he was preaching. See, if I collapse, don't sympathize with me. Did you hear that? Don't sympathize. Because what I'm enjoying, you have no idea. You have no idea. You have no idea. Those days I heard of Dr. Mas Moron. Every time I find Dr. Mas Moron, he's teaching kingdom principles, kingdom agenda, the wisdom keys. So I said, oh, this man, he, he's, he likes theological things. Until I heard him teach on fasting, I was like, no, this man is not a human being. He started fasting at the age of 18 years. 
his first fast was 28 days on water alone. And he did that for over 37 years. Every year, he fasted 21 days on water and 14 days on water twice. If you don't know Dr. Mons Moron, he was a personal advisor to 16 presidents. All of them, he charges them. He was a multi-billion businessman, yet a preacher. Companies will call this man of God. And he says, no, they don't understand my wisdom. My wisdom is divine. That was the source of his wisdom. Governments were hungry for him. They pay him to teach about policies. Dr. Masmoron. So now all these people I've mentioned, tell me who was not a man of fasting and prayer. I was shocked to know that even the hymns we sing today came from the knees and the sweat of men who were men giving to fast and prayer. I was shocked. There was one of these things I wrote it down. You sing these hymns and they still, they still sound fresh. Some of the hymns are over 100 years old and they are still fresh to us. One of them is uh, uh, How Great Thou Art. You hear that song, right? It was written by Carl Costa. It was written in 1885. 1885. Where was your grandfather? Yet! Great is thy faithfulness. Written by Thomas Christian in 1923. Oh, come. Oh, ye faithful. It was written in 1751. Immortal. Invisible. 1839. Holy, 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 1861. What a friend we have in Jesus, 1763. You know, today the musicians we have, when they do a song in three years, we don't hear the song again. You must feel bad about it. I'm giving it to everybody here. Everybody will receive it. Everybody will receive it. In two, three months, we don't hear the song again. You know why? There's no power in the song. The lyrics, everything can be so powerful, but there's no power. So it can't travel. Are you aware that it was not Jesus that made himself famous? You can check in Luke 14, 14 again. Look, Luke 14, 14. Look, look, look 4, 14. Look 4, 14. Watch. And Jesus returned in the what? Power of the Spirit into Galilee. And there went out what? A fame of him. The anointing made him famous. See, without the anointing, eh, you would do every social media campaign. You realize that the battle is not to the swift. <laughs> you will push, 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 and you get tired. The anointing will speak. Some of you, you are looking for promotion for the past four years, six years. All your friends around you have been promoted, and you are sitting down. You are sitting down. You are okay. See, have you forgotten the Bible tells us that whatsoever you do, it shall prosper. So it doesn't matter what you sell. It's the anointing that sells it. And the problem of the church today is that we are comfortable. After hearing all these accounts of men that gave themselves to fasting, why won't you make fasting your lifestyle? Some of you, the reason why you are afraid to fast is because you lose weight. What has the weight you are having doing for you? The current weight you have, what is he doing for you? Praise God. You see, what scared me and got me intimidated was the fact of Cornelius. Whether Cornelius or Cornelius, I don't know, but the man was not born again, but he fasted. In the first thing, he had an encounter. So I said, a man who is not born again was using our principles. What about you that is born again? I was provoked in my spirit. He's, he was not born again. How? The church likes eating. Eating, eating, eating. We like to fill our stomach every single day with food. No wonder we are not seeing the power they saw. No wonder. I tell you, a Christian who eats Sunday morning before he comes to church is not serious. You can go and write it in a diary. You can challenge me anywhere you go. 
Haven't you realized that you are preaching on Sunday and a Christian is sleeping? It's because he took breakfast. Any Christian you find sleeping, if it's not because of work or something, it's because he took breakfast in the morning. Because you see, the reason why your brain begins to work more than necessary is because of food. Because it begins digestion. So you are listening at the same time there's digestion going on. So you are stressed already. That's why you have been dozing in church. You have been eating in the morning. So I, 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 I caught you. How do you eat breakfast? So you are coming for Sunday service. You take cocoa and both float. How will you listen to the word of God? No, I don't think you're serious. You eat water early in the morning. You, you, you eat it with your hand. Sunday morning. Then you come and sit down. Your mouth is made. You are chewing gum. Mentos refreshes your mouth. You are eating water. You are, eat, you are chewing mentos. You are listening to the word of God. Preach on, sir. Uh, preach on. <laughs> Are we close? No, we have started. No, I'm, I'm, I'm serious. Why do you have to eat breakfast before coming for church? Oh, I know it's working in the hearts of people now. Because see, you can never concentrate on the word. Now, try eating in the morning when, you're, when you have an exam. Try eating and go and write the exam. Let's see if you can concentrate. That's why many of you fail in exam. Because you eat in the morning before you go and write exam. So, so your mind is busy. It is busy doing so many things. See, there is a science of fasting. I'm teaching you both spirituality and the science. And when I'm teaching on the guidelines of fasting, you'll be shocked what is happening. Even doctors are now begging every human being to at least not eat a whole day for 24 hours. Someone is, 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 hey, it's not, it's not possible. Someone says, you, you will never die. It has been proven by science that a man becomes actually hungry after fasting for 40 days. So that hunger you have been feeling is all early morning carnality. I'm telling you, you are not hungry. It is, it is your mental structure. You have always been eating at 8 a.m. So the body is now used to it. The mind is used to it. So at 8 a.m., it is knocking, knocking. You are not hungry. Oh. It is the brain chemistry that is telling you that it's time for food because it has been used to that routine. Have you seen this? So it is your brain chemistry telling you that it's time to eat. It's not because you are hungry. I'm telling you, you are not hungry. A man becomes hungry after 40 days. That's like I'm, no human being on earth can fast beyond 40 days. After 40 days, only on water, your body will start to fight itself and you die. So nobody throw out the Bible faster beyond 40 days. It's, it's the threshold. You can't go beyond that. So doctors are fighting. They are begging people, drink only water for one, just one week, once in a week. Only water. So that the body can be able to have the freedom to work on you. Many of the diseases today, diabetes, colon cancer, is caused by rotting food in your body. There are some food that you ate seven years ago. It's still in your body. I'm telling you, seven years ago, there is food choke in your body. It has caked in your intestine line. So the new food you are eating, you might think it is clearing it. No. It is so caked that it is hard. So now, when new food is coming, it will enter into the system, leaving the chokes around it, your intestines. So when the food keeps rotting, then you have colon cancer. And most of the disease we are having today, this sugar, diabetes, and all that, it is food. So even scientists and doctors are begging us to fast. These people don't even have the spirit of God. They don't have the spirit of God. And yet, the church finds itself eating. We love food. We close church. You are in a hurry to go home. For what? Food. It seems today the church has added one more ministry to its ministry. It's called eating ministry. They've added eating ministry to it. We cannot, we cannot do by food. We, see, if, you, if you're going to start a fast and you have been eating three times a day, you are in trouble to begin with. Because you are not coming to deal with your body mechanism. To fight a whole lot of things because... You have given yourself to too much comfort. Why do we eat breakfast? Breakfast is breaking a fast. Because throughout the dawn, you were not eating. So in the morning, you are breaking a fast. So you, your life has always been a fast life. Why don't you continue it? Hmm. It's surprisingly that the Bible has said nothing good about their belly. Yet Christians love their belly. 
I was shocked. It's reading through scripture about the belly. I was shocked. First Corinthians 6, the verse 13. When I saw that scripture, I was like, you guys, it, it must scare you. He says, meat for the belly. And the belly for meat. But God shall destroy both it and them. <laughs> Philippians 3, 19. Look. He said, whose end is destruction? Whose God is their belly? There are some of you, your God is your stomach. You have been serving your stomach faithfully for 14 years. There has been no day that your stomach has gone on a fast. Yeah. He says, whose belly is their God? This is Apostle Paul speaking. There are, there are many Christians who have made their belly their God. Every food around you eat. You are in a trot row and both float is passing. Both float. Both float. Throw up at your bra. Patch mommy, two series. Why? Ice cream. Ice cream. Rap at your ice cream. Two series. Patch mommy, two. A one bread. A one bread. Patch mommy, two. Why? It's, so you have bought it for tomorrow morning. I didn't cry. I didn't cry. You buy, you eat. In Kosiani Meko, in Kosiani Meko, and say, One city, hey, who did the air for? Mommy, too. But I'm a Jenny and Komoai. Mamma Kobe, pray. I give you. Thank you, Lord. Oh, no wonder you have spent all your money on your belly. Calculate the number of food you have eaten for the past 10 years. You are a millionaire in your stomach. I'm telling you. I'm telling you this. This is a serious matter. I'm doing this in 10 minutes, then we pray. Why are believers not seeing results in their fasting? Because every church declares a fast every year. This will change your life forever. Why your prayers, why your fasting is not working? I will shock you with this. And if you can apply this to your life, you'll be shocked. See, thank God for this meeting. Thank God for this meeting, I'm telling you. Why your fasting is not effective, I will tell you today. And you'll be shocked the mistakes you have done. Number one, lack of understanding. No wonder we call a fast and Christians are angry. They say, oh, you have already spotted the fast. Because your heart is not for God. When I finish defining fasting, you'll be shocked. And because of this lack of understanding, we have built a lot of myths around fasting. We say fasting is for pastors only. That is the worst error you can find a Christian utter on his lips. It's for those who are doing ministry. You, you are kidding with me. Number two, they say, no, not the, the B. They said, those who are fasting are legalistic and they are wasting their time. Of course, there are some people who have taken this to an extreme and people are trying to use fasting to coin God and all that. I'm not talking about that. But it's a myth to think that when a man is fasting, he's legalistic. He's trying to do the law. See, fasting makes us appear unnecessarily strange. Unnecessarily strange. Hey, these people, hey, fasting, hmm, that's their mentality. Anybody fasting is strange to them. The D, Fasting is a church ritual. That's a myth people have. It's a normal church ritual we do every year. That is why your fasting is failing. It's lack of understanding of fasting. That's why I'm doing this teaching for you. And many of you think fasting is to twist the hand of God. That when, when you, you want to take a decision that's outside the will of God, then you are fasting for it to enter the will of God. You are fasting for it to turn the word of God. See, fasting does not contradict God's word. If God's word is against something, no matter the fast you do, it is against it. So, one is a lack of understanding of fasting. Number two, Isaiah chapter 58, verse 3, satisfying your pleasure. That is one of the main reasons why many Christians don't have their fasting yielding results for them. Look, wherefore have we fasted, say they, and thou see it not? Wherefore we have afflicted our soul, thou, and thou takest no knowledge. Behold, in the day of your fast, God is telling them the reason. Ye is it in the day of fast, ye find what? Pleasure and exact all your labors. 
one of the reasons why many Christians have ineffective fasting is because they use the fasting to enjoy pleasure. There are some of you, you are fasting to two and you realize that the thing is now 9 a.m. And 9 and you're calculating the thing to two. You know, it is going to be tough for you. Then you start watching basket mouth. Bobby. You have taken two hours. Now it's 11 o'clock. You check the time again. Then you put in one season movie that can take you three hours. Then you'll be watching, 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 watching. Uh, 12.55. Then you take your meal and put it on the table. <laughs> 12.59. You start boiling the hot water. One o'clock. Father, we thank you for a successful journey. There was no success in this journey. I'm telling you. It is one of the reasons your fasting is ineffective because you use your time to enjoy your pleasure. Fasting is willingly deciding to allow your stomach to go on break for spiritual purposes. So if your fasting is not gaining you spiritual stature, it is a starvation. We hunger in the flesh to feast on God. So whilst you are hungering, if you're, you are using the rest of the pleasure you have to entertain yourself, your fasting is meaningless. No, I've seen Christians who are fasting from 6 to 6. And you know what they do? Their breakfast they get to them is cocoa and buffalo. Then they put it in their drawer. Afternoon is rice and stew. Then they put it, they collect it. Serve me, oh, serve me. They serve you, put it down. You cover it. In the evening is bankum and tilapia. Then you put that one to down. In, in the evening, when you finish breaking, you clear breakfast, you clear lunch, you clear supper. You were not fasting, you were doing Ramadan. It was a Ramadan celebration we were doing. No, I'm telling you, it's Ramadan. It was not a fast. Because the Muslims who eat are done heavy in the daytime. Allergy. <laughs> they are ready for and that's what many Christians have been doing. So it's like you only delayed your hunger to eat everything at a go. It was not a fast. It will never work. Am I helping somebody? I hope I am. So many use fasting. The time they use for fast, they use it to while away time. They don't read their Bible. They don't listen to an anointed message. That is why in LGCC, we don't just declare fast. We give you a timetable to guide you in your journey. We are in a 30 days fast. You can join us. We have the timetable. When we close, see any of the ministers, you can have it. You must design a disciplinary timetable you follow in a fast. Because it's a good advantage to spend time with the Lord. That is when the power is derived. See, God does not answer fasting. He answers prayer. So what happens is that what prayer does, fasting facilitates it. Are you seeing that? So it is not that it is the fasting that the fasting is only facilitating the prayer. So whatever results you yield in prayer, fasting facilitates it. Dr. Masmoon said fasting is like connecting yourself to a spiritual tank. Now, when you connect to a tank, however big the tank is, if your pipe hole is small, it, it, the, the flow of the water comes as long as, it comes only through the, how small the pipe hole is. You can't do anything about it. It's a big tank hole, but the size of the pipe determines the water that flows. When you fast, you open the pipe. Are you seeing this? When you fast, you open the pipe and the pipe becomes much bigger and there is a much greater flow. The Holy Ghost in you is a tank. But fasting is what increases the what? The pipe for the flow of the anointing. Simple. Many don't know this. Number three. Strife. Look at the next verse. Next verse. The verse four. He says, behold, ye fast for what? Strife. There are some of you in your fasting, before you end your fast, you have quarreled with four or five people. God is saying that you are wasting your time. 
The word strife also means competition. We are trying to compare who is fasting more. You need to kill that thing. Fasting is not competition. It's between you and God. When anybody provokes you in a fast, ignore it. You see, that is how come when you are through with the correct fasting, eh, it changes your character. It changes you inside out. So if you are a faster and you love fighting, quarreling, it break the fast because you are wasting your time. That's what the Bible is saying. He says, and debate. That's number four. Debates, arguments. Chelsea, mind you, arguing. A man on fast, arguing about who is topping on the league table. You are in the office, your friends are going for lunch, you are also going with them. You are talking about football. Whilst they are eating, you are not eating. I say, Oh, Charlie, you put chop, me are there fast top. On our church, say we they fast. Our church, our pastor says we are fasting. So, what we go do? You know, that is the problem. Oh, in a fast, when it is break at the office, separate yourself. Find a place that is quiet and go and pray there. That's what, that's what makes it more effective. Doing your fast, you might be working, yet your focus is on the Lord. It is a fast. God knows you are working, but you shift your focus on him. All the hours, see, do you know the, 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 uh, the minimum time you look at your phone? When you calculate all together, you look at your phone close to five hours a day. Yes, close to five hours a day. Imagine you sacrifice all that five hours and you are working. Man, the Lord, I'm praying for my family. You are interceding at the same time. You are meditating on the word of God, yet you are focusing on job. You have no idea what you are doing to your life. It may seem it's not working, though. You know, when you are growing, you don't see it. People see it, right? It's the same with fasting. You'll be preaching and people will say, ah, there is something about your message. You think you are preaching another message. But there's something about your message. People will start testifying it. That's how fasting is. People will see the effect in your life. It can change you. I'm telling you. Number five, wickedness or unkindness. Check it. He says, behold, he fast for strife and debate. And to smite with a feast of wickedness. Do you know that when you are in a fast, it is assumed that if you are going to eat in the evening, that means your breakfast and your lunch, you have the money there. Give that money out. That's a fast. Thank you for the silence. That's a fast. So somebody who is begging, you sacrifice your breakfast, your lunch for that person. So you are saying that I am sacrificing my food this morning just to spend time with God. Therefore, since I'm sacrificing my food, this money only has use for somebody who needs food. Then I give it to him. You are making your fasting powerful. I'm telling you. That's I come in a fast. You must learn to be a giver. You are, you are sharpening it. So he says wickedness. Feast of wickedness. Unkindness. Unkindness. In a fast, you should be kinder than anybody. Learn to give. Be liberal when you are fasting. Last week, the, when, when we, I mean, through the, the times that we've been fasting, we have so many things in there. Conflicts, this, this. Almost three months. We, we've not eaten it. I said, what are all these things doing in the fridge? Uh, in the drawer. We clean everything. We want to give it out as gifts. Because we're not eating it. So we gave it to somebody. We gave it to somebody. That's what happens in the fast. You are making it sharper and effective. He says, you do this to make your voice to be heard on high. It's not possible. Look at the next verse. He says, is it such a fast that I have chosen? A day for a man to afflict his soul? Is it to bow down his head in a barrage and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Will thou call this a fast and an acceptable day of the Lord? Look at the next verse. He says, is God is teaching us what the fast is. Is this not the fast that I have chosen? So fasting is not your choice. It is what God chooses. Then he says, to lose the bounds of wickedness. That means you become kind. 
So if you're a Christian and you don't give, fasting breaks that yoke of stinginess of your life. Then he says to lose the balance of wickedness, to undo heavy burdens, and to let the oppressed go free, and that you break every yoke. You become helpful to others. And some of you in a fast, that's when you are more disrespectful to everybody. I'm praying, I'm praying. Why? 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 Sister, please find some food to eat. In a fast, you... <laughs> Am I helping? Finally. I'm going to teach what fasting is next week. But I, I just want to help you. Who needs a fast? One. A man or a woman with continuous wrong thoughts. If you realize that you are continuously having wrong thoughts. Thoughts of fear. There are sometimes you are, you are there and then you feel you are going to, you are going to die. Sometimes you can see yourself in a coffin. I was having one problem. Those days when I sit in trotro at the front, I feel the car will open and I'll come out. It was a stronghold, I'm telling you. Many of you will not see anything wrong with it, but it was a big problem for me. So when I'm in a car, I put my hand there like this. It was fear. Fasting will destroy it. It will destroy it, I'm telling you. Two, last for women, especially the fair ones. If you realize that for some time you are having some continuous last for sex, last for women, you are married, but you realize that you see some other women, you feel like chasing them. You, you, you see some men, and then you, you feel like, aha, uh -huh, you need a fast immediately. You don't know what I'm talking about. Number three, if you are talkative, you need a fast. If you are somebody who talks and spills secrets, it's a problem, oh. It's a problem. Go on a fast. Because you see, when you get when you are fasting, eh, because of the hunger, it doesn't make you talk too much. It is killing it softly. That's what happens. So in a fast, you are killing those desires. You want to say something, but you are weak. So you keep quiet. You are killing it gradually. You have some secret to share. All of a sudden, you lose the pleasure in saying it. That's what happens in a fast. Next, anger problem. If you're a Christian, you are quick-tempered. Give yourself to fast. In a fast, you give the Holy Ghost the place to speak to you. It's very easy. If you're a quick-tempered believer, Dr. Smith Wigglesworth was a very anointed man of God, but he had a problem, anger problem. He was very quick-tempered, and it was destroying his ministry. Because a pastor who is not patient cannot pastor. Because church members will give you a, a real he a hedge of a time. And some of you are just giving a chance to pastor for two months and you, you come with a resignation letter. It's not an easy thing to pastor. If you have an anger problem, give yourself to fast. Dr. Smith Wigglesworth entered into a 10-day fast only on water. When he came out, anger was broken. Permanently. Permanently. If you have a glutony problem, you realize that you, you just like food. You don't know why. You just like food. Give yourself to fast. It destroys glutonous problems. And let me help you with this. There are some of you, have you realized that when you are fasting, sometimes you even get more angrier than you were when you were not fasting. What fasting does is that whatever weakness you have, it exposes it. So, there are sometimes you'll be fasting. All of a sudden, you see fair women and you'll be ejaculating. You don't understand what is happening to me. I'm rather fasting. Why is this? The fasting is exposing your lust. So, what fasting does is that whatever problem or weakness you have, it heightens it for you to see it clearly. That's why you get more angry when you're fasting. Your lust multiplies by five when you're fasting. You don't know. Fasting exposes you. You, sometimes you'll be fasting and then you see people with wealth then you're like, hey, you start to envy them your problem has always been envy your problem was envy and the fasting is you know, you were fasting you heard one of your best friends was having a wedding and you know you're more beautiful than the person like hmm. you are in a fast all of a sudden some strange envy just enters you you wish the wedding gown was bent. Oh, I'm telling you, see, you don't know what this heart can do. 
You can envy somebody and you wish the person didn't have what he has. You wish the person was dead. You can wish and imagine it. When you give yourself to fast, you will kill it with time. I'm telling you. Next, you have a problem with covetousness. You covet everything you see. Every shoe you see, you like it. You are having a car. You see another person's car. You don't like your car again. You are having iPhone 1, iPhone 9. Somebody has 11. All of a sudden, the iPhone 9 looks old to you. It's not old though. It is covetousness. Fasting will destroy it. I'm telling you. So, you, you see now, everybody needs a fast now. Good. Pride. You need a fast. If you realize that you can't, you, you are the type of person that does not accept rebuke and correction. You are proud when you are rebuked. Nobody can correct you. You need a fast. Because fasting humbles and afflicts your soul. Addictions. You need a fast. You realize that, Charlie, you have been trying hard about this pornography thing. Pornotopia is, is, is something you cannot do without. You, you just watch it and then you feel bad and you go and cry. Give yourself to fasting. You give yourself to fasting. You see, anytime you're about to watch it, there is something inside you, you lose it. I'm telling you, give yourself to fasting. You, the power would die. It would die just like that. I'm telling you. When I started ministry fresh, I was having pornography and masturbation problem. When I put myself on a fast, ah, nobody told me. I, I collected all the CDs, broke them into pieces. It cut my hand this way. That was the scar of sin. It died. And some of you say, oh, I'm a sick class, so I come for you. You are, you are just joking. You can, I'll be teaching about different kinds of fast, so you can do something mad. Fasting broke ulcer for my life. I was an ulcer patient. Fasting broke also of my life. When I started ministry, they prophesied to me that I was going to be a prophet. The next day, I was a footballer. They prophesied to me I was going to be a prophet. The next day, I started fasting. I fasted for one year, four months, continuously. First January, six to six. Second January, six to six. Third January, six to six. Fourth January, six. To the next year, one year, four months, continuous. I didn't understand some of the technicalities that I know now, but I was just doing it. Sometimes seven days dry within that same year. Just doing it. Just doing it. So when I'm talking about fasting, I know what I'm saying. I'm not just some... No, no, no. I know what I'm saying. So I fasted continuously. It began to open my spirit. Some of you see that I've written 19 books. You thought it came by uh, uh, chewing popcorn. I'm telling you, it's serious, neighbor. It was in fasting that the Holy Ghost started teaching me. It was in fasting. I started... I started copying the Bible in a notebook. I bought many diaries. I'll copy the Bible and transfer it into a notebook. I write Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. Genesis 1, 2. And I'll be recopying it in a notebook. And I'll fill the whole notebook and I'll start again. Not knowing God was using that fast and that discipline to, to help me in my, my writing lifestyle. I was writing. So I have, I have dozens of notebooks all filled. Recopying the Bible in my fast. The more I was doing it, at dawn, I wake up to pray. I saw my first vision. Whilst I was praying at dawn, this one is not I saw in my heart. Oh. It was raining in my house. How can it rain in my house? So I saw the rain. I was going to call them to bring something, a pound to collect it, and I realized the rain was increasing. I said, what is happening? But the thing went, I said, oh. Jesus, <laughs> what is this? It, start, it happened when I started fasting. The next vision I saw, I was kneeling down as I, as I began praying and I saw an angel whose head was like a shark and I ran away. I ran away. I said, shark? <laughs> then it started increasing. I'll be praying. I don't. All of a sudden, I'll see maize falling. I said, eh, did somebody bring maize? I said, ah, it was a fast. It was opening me up. If you want to have consistent visions, if you want to step up your dream life, give yourself to fast. I'm telling you. Then it started increasing and growing. One of the first cases I handled was a witchcraft attack. You see, I can't obey for my name here, King Kong. I be four cases. My hand on the rough. I be four cases. 
Ah, not me here before chairman. Uh, when I appear, you, 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 you can't mess up. There are three pastors that went to handle a, a witchcraft case. In less than a week, they all died. And that was the case I was going to handle. But thank God I was on a fast. It was two house helps who was doing that. They, they were defecating on the, uh, the man, the head of the house. They defecated on the head to let him know it's not the head. <laughs> You might think it's not real. Eh? Eh, thank God for LGCCO. You are hearing, I'm a new creation, but eh, eh, and you're better, Sabati. They put about 15 sicknesses on the woman. She go to the hospital now. They, they don't know what is wrong with the woman. It was the two house helps. When I entered the house, they went to sleep. No, no, spiritually, they, they have resurrected from their sleep to come and attack me. Unfortunately, when they were coming, they saw a big eagle that was covering me like this. A man of fasting is a man of protection, I'm telling you. And they saw a huge lion lying down. And they went and now they couldn't wake up again. We prayed, dealt with the case, and I went home. At dawn, I heard our dogs barking. Dogs don't bark like that. I knew something had gone wrong. When I turned my face, one of the ladies was standing in front of me. This is not a joke. And I rose up. You know, those days we didn't have the understanding we have today. Ah, and then uh, you could be for. <laughs> In the name, broom! The, the witch has vanished. Uh, that, that day, from 12 a.m. to 5, it was prayer. <laughs> and I pray, pray and say, blows. Those days I was doing Kuma wood warfare. <laughs> Randaka, bow! Then the demon would go back like this. Eh, I am a salon. Eh, also, Jibia, Jibulet. Bow! That was the kind of dreams I was having. Bullet. <laughs> oh, the next morning, they all woke up early morning. The two witches, their faces, you couldn't identify their faces. Swollen! And they packed their things and they left. The woman was healed. The man was restored. His business was restored. And see, there is something about fasting. Even in my ignorance. Oh, my goodness. We have journeyed with this thing. I remember on campus, the first time I was sacked from school. Maybe some of you don't know. I was sacked from the university before I came back again. I was a crazy faster. I'll be fasting, and then the lecturer is teaching. I'm seeing the, the board is a whole vision. <laughs> so I got crazy. I didn't know some of the rules of engagement. In my examination sheet, I wrote Bible quotations and prophecies. I'm, I'm serious. All the eight subjects, Bible quotation and prophecy. So I was prophesying about the lecturers in the answer sheet. Oh, it's a history in UPSA. Go and check. It's a history. I set a record. I'm a regional and why. <laughs> the lecturer was looking for this person. Who is this? Who is this? Who is this Isaac Papo? Who is it? So every lecturer was looking for me. I couldn't make my GPA. And they sacked me from school. So me, I thought I was going to start a Bible school. My parents, everybody here. They even thought I was filled with the demon. So they took me to a prayer camp. They almost casted God out of me. My mother will be saying, stop fasting. Please stop fasting. She'll be weeping. Oh, my goodness. Auntie Maggie, shall never know. I was still fasting. Oh, so in a vision, I saw that I'd come back to UPSA again. And God says, reapply. I reapplied. I was the seventh person to be admitted, which was not possible. God wanted to make a point. And I came back. Everything was turned around. All my mates had gone ahead. And God says, for your shame, I'll give you double. See, there's something I'm fasting you. This is my first book, If These Things Be You. I wrote that book about nine, ten years ago. I started writing that book ten years ago. See, there is something fasting will do for you. You will never be the same. I'm telling you. Just begin to pray in the spirit. And say, God... God. I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs>